Let's break down the interface of Isotopes Ozone 9. So when you first load up the plugin, this is what you're going to be met with. And this is the basic interface that everything does in fact work off. So to break it down really quickly across the top panel here, the first thing we've just got our Ozone Advanced branding and next to it, we've actually got a name. The reason we can name it is because in Tonal Balance and the Visual Mixer, where you can see things via just their name rather than the plugin themselves. So perhaps we're going to have multiple versions of ozone and this is automatically named ozone 2. Say we were using just part of ozone on a bus we could call it something like drum bus and it's going to show up as drum bus for us in tonal balance and the visual mixer. Moving just over to the right from that we've got the master assistant. If we trigger the master assistant we get a nice overlay going through our process of how we'll do that. If you want to know how to use the mastering assistant there'll be a video on this channel for you. Over from that we've got our preset menu. A couple of ways we can navigate presets is open up the preset menu as seen here or we can tap the arrows and go back and forth through our different presets. We don't need to do that in this case but there are lots of good presets that get you a quick baseline and if you want to make your own so you've just got plugins preset up to how you work, really good way to work. We've got some quick global controls here. So we've got undo and we've got undo history. We've then got our settings inside our settings. Inside our settings, we've got lots of different ways we can adjust how ozone works for us in terms of setting things like our default meters, um, how some of the crossovers work and multiple things in there. We, uh, and then we've got a little help, which obviously brings up our help documentation and manual. Just below that, we've got what is kind of like our, our plugin chain if you will because Ozone sort of a host that then hosts the different plugins that work with it. As we can see there's an equalizer and a maximizer and whichever one is selected is always going to have this nice blue line around it. If we select the maximizer we can see that shifts over and then we've got a dotted outline and if we go over that it lights up the plus. So this lets us add more plugins into that area. Obviously only the plugins are built inside. It doesn't take third parties. Within this little preview here we can do a couple of things we can quickly take the plugin out of the chain and if this little blue symbol is active it's active and will be part of the chain and the chain runs from left to right so it's going to run equalizer to maximizer at the moment solo it will mute everything else and solo just that plug if we try and solo two it will just pass them over and we can only ever solo once we can't solo part of a chain if we wanted to do that we would just mute or take the ones out of the chain that we don't want to hear if you want to open presets just for that module we've got just below here we can click that and it will give us presets just for the equalizer module. Super useful. We've also got a meter here and when audio is playing, we can see that it's going to read what kind of processing is happening within that part of the plugin. As you can see at the moment, the equalizer has nothing processing, but if we were to take something down on three, we'll see we've got some processing negatively. If we were to boost up on five, we can see we've now got some processing going up in the positive and we can kind of blank those out so we're at the similar level we were before. Let's just know if there's been a boost or reduction essentially as the process goes along. And last but not least we have the little cross and that takes the plugin away from the chain. If we unload everything this is how we look and when we load in extra plugins by clicking here we get a nice drop down list of whatever it is we wish to enter into our chain. The window below here will always show whichever plugin is selected and its parameters. Many of them for example the imager and the exciter will have this black section across the top and this is a multi-band section this will allow us to see what sections are being processed in multiband and they are completely independent for each one and if you want a breakdown on each individual section we'll be doing that as we go forward as well. Over to the far right hand side is our metering section. Our first meter here on the left hand side is the signal coming into ozone as well with our respective level measurements that we've chosen. So for example here we have peak and luffs. Peak is shown here on the outer side and our LUFS meter is shown here in the middle. We are able to change these around by clicking on IO. And here where I currently had integrated LUFS, I could change to something like RMS. We now have a different metering system that's going to show us peak and RMS integrated into the same level. Our RMS meetings are here in slightly darker gray, while our peak reading is here in the closer to white. We can adjust the input and output. Currently, if we move one, we can adjust the input and output by just moving the sliders up or down. And we get a readout below by how much. So currently we have reduced our input by minus six. And we could hear our output up by plus 
three. Below the readout is a little blue symbol. This is a link. We can unlink the left and right and balance them independently, which could be useful for certain situations and certain tracks. The plus and minus here lets us zoom in or out on the meter reading and the detail changes respectively. Below we have some overall plugin parameters. Below we have some overall controls that are quite useful, such as bypass. We can bypass the whole plugin. There's a quick reference to see whether we're heading in the right direction. It's always nice to reference what you're doing. We can do that individually with the modules or as a whole. We also have gain match, which this, <coughs> the idea of gain match means that when we do bypass the plugin, we're not going to have a sudden jump in level, making the louder always seem to be see perceived as better. We should have a similar a balance in level when we're bypassing and listening in AB. Below and on the left, we have these two interlinking circles. They represent a stereo balance. If we click on them, we get a nice summed to mono balance as well. Really useful for checking a sum to mono mix. And the arrow symbol here flips our left and right channels. So we can just have them inverted just to check our mix in that respect as well. <coughs> <coughs> reference here, when we click on it, changes our plugin window and we're able to load in a reference track. Enabling it here would allow playback of the reference. Codec does a similar thing, except we're able to mimic different types of codec. We have to switch it on to choose our codec. We could go for a really low quality MP3 and we can even solo so we just hear the artifacts created by that. This is a really good way to check how your mix is going to translate on something like SoundCloud, which streams at around 128 kbp. S. And lastly, we've got Dither, and it works in very much the same fashion. To make any changes to it, we need to enable it and have it selected to change our plugin window. And here we have all our desired Dither settings. If you'd like me to do a deep dive video on Dither, throw it in the comments below, and we can absolutely dive into that. Very last thing to note is Ozone is now fully resizable. And here we have a tiny little icon that we can just click on, and we can drag and resize Ozone out as we need. So guys, that is a breakdown of the Ozone interface. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please bash a like on the video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I will see you guys on the next one.